Minions, Tim Lee, Not So Legacy Studio today here at the office, kicking a little bit of time out of the way here. Want to do something really, really quick. Um, I've shot so many videos using my phone here in this very room uh, with the lights that are up above, uh, and this is what you usually see. And this is a fairly bright room, but I want to show you what we can do with this room with just two lights on these new stands that I just got, Hagibus King 10 and King 20, set up here just on my desk. I have them generally pointing this way, just uh, just gently up above, pointing down. Also got this little guy here, my Wii light, um, and I'm gonna set this guy up behind us, see if we can cast some light on the wall. I wanna show you what you can do to a room very, very quickly. We're gonna start by turning off the lights completely. I was gonna use my microphone, my awesome uh, STM USB, brought a Type-C cable with me. It's not working, so sorry for the audio, which is probably not its best. This would have helped, um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead, turn off the lights, and make this quick change, and turn this room into a really cool podcast room in no time at all. Let's see what happens. <laughs> So the light that you're seeing right now is actually being cast from my large screen that I have in here that my office got me. It's a widescreen TV that I use on my computer here in my studio. And you can see what kind of light it's casting. It's pretty intense, uh, which is good because the camera is not working as hard. Basically, cameras on a, uh, on a phone automatically compensate for low light. Uh, so yes, things are looking pretty clear on my face. I think we can get them slightly clearer. What we're gonna do first, since there's so much light coming from this side, I am going to switch um, and take away this light temporarily, which is the King 10, uh, because it's not as powerful. We're gonna put the King 20 over here. Let's go ahead and just turn that on now. Since we do have that screen, which is casting a pretty blue hue, I'm going to turn this light on here, and I am going to change its Kelvin just a little bit towards um, towards that bluer side. Okay, we'll try maybe 4,500 Kelvin just to start. Putting it up above my head should begin casting shadows. Now, the goal I'm looking for here is to create this triangle effect on my face. We're going to make a little bit of adjustment here, which is pretty, excuse me, pretty easy to do. All I'm going to do is just take the light and bend it. Moving it to the side more and more, I can move it further back, and all I'm trying to do is create that triangle on my face. So what we've done is we've overpowered the um, the TV now. So all the light, though the TV is still causing an effect, all the light is now coming from that light and creating this Rembrandt effect on my cheek, which is exactly what we're looking for. This light is literally, I can grab it with my hand, I can even touch the light from here, and we can get that really nice Rembrandt effect. Now we need to uh, simply knock this all this shadow down on this side of the face really really easy to do with the other light set up on its stand what we're gonna do is turn that light on we'll go ahead and set this at the same Kelvin uh, I think I said what 50 uh, we'll do 5,000 here I think is what I had 4,500 5,000 somewhere around there and I'm just gonna turn this down for starters to about 25% okay so it's not incredibly bright all and we'll put that on the other side here and just see how it looks. Look at how it's knocked down that little bit, just just a little bit. I mean, that all we want to do is just calm down the shadow. The shadow there is a good thing. We just want to kind of tone it out ever so slightly. Um, let's go ahead now and uh, maybe instead we'll just take it just a little bit darker because I do like a little bit of of um, you know just a how do I put this. A little bit of a cinematic effect. I do like a little bit of shadow on the face. I'm, I'm just trying to knock it down, not knock it out. So if I turn this off, you can see that very heavy cast, and this is simply going to level that down just a little bit. Okay, now we've taken care of our lights. It looks really good. We'll make some adjustments to the camera here in a second. Let's go ahead and throw a light in that background now. So I like this little thing. The only difference between this light and the Hagibus lights is that this one cannot be charged and used at the same time. Uh, let's go ahead and find the color that we want today. Maybe we'll do something in a orange or something of that nature or a, or a red-ish orange. Or yellow. Let's go ahead and make sure it's at full intensity. And literally, I'm just going to start 
by tossing it on the floor and see what it does. It's not doing that much, that's okay. Let's see if we can put it somewhere um, off to the side and bounce it against that back wall instead. So take it like that, see if we can bounce it against that back wall. Still not quite bright enough, let's try something a little bit more close to the subject. Okay. Not really happening here. It's mainly because of the intensity of these two lights. If I knocked down these two lights, we could make a pretty big difference to that back wall with that little tiny light. Uh, because of the intensity of the lights that I have going on here right now, it's not really helping knock that, that effect in the back there. Also, if you can find a light source uh, or or a area to put your light where there are different areas where it can bounce off like this for instance that's going to help you a lot because of these areas here the light can bounce off of them and kind of bounce around a little bit more and give things just a little bit more effect in this situation here we have two options one I can either change my camera a little bit which we're going to try and do now actually I'm just going to darken this up ever so slightly and you can see that if we knock that down, we can kind of get that back up. In this situation, we need much brighter lights to compensate for that. So what we can do instead um, in this situation is we can bring the overall lights down. So instead of putting my key light at 100%, let's see if we can calm that down a little bit. So we'll drop that down a little bit there. Now, unfortunately, by doing this, that now allows the screen to have its effect. And secondly, on top of that, now also, you can see what it's doing to the background. The background's starting to peek through a bit more, which is great. But now we have to compensate with our uh, camera, which means things could get more grainy, could get a little bit less um, uh, crunchy, or, or what's the word I'm looking for? A little less, um, there's, there's a term I've, I've enjoyed using, uh, just not quite getting the effect that you might like. We're going to go ahead and turn down the other fill light here. That's literally 1%. We'll go about 3 or 4% here. All right, cool. Let's go a bit darker on this side now. This works really well for, for uh, nice dark rooms. So right there. That's about right right there. And then what we'll do is we'll compensate now by adjusting the camera's ISO here or the phone's ISO in this situation. So we'll just kind of bring that up a little bit until our face is pretty well lit. Nice thing about uh, the, uh, what, what's the name of this app, a fi a Filmic Pro, uh, is we also have false colors, which is pretty, <laughs> pretty nifty, uh, and a whole bunch of other effects so I can really make sure that I'm getting what I'm looking for in my face, really lock in what I'm looking for, which is about there, I think. Uh, maybe a little bit, a little bit less. Right about there, I think, give or take. We can make small adjustments, but take a look at what it's done to that backlight now. Uh, that's a little better. You can see what it's done to that backlight, and if we want, we could even turn off this computer screen. And uh, that's obviously going to need to add more fill, so we can add in just a touch more fill light here. Okay. Let's compensate with this one. And the nice thing is everything is right here. I can make all of my adjustments right here in the moment because they're so close. Um, it is going to cast harder shadows, but the thing is, look at what I can create with next to nothing going on here. Uh, now let's see what happens if we take this light and just drop it on the floor here now, or put it on my backpack and see if that does anything. All right, starting to cast little effects on the shirts and things like that. I'd like to see more back there. I think what we would do is we'd use a stronger light, something more intense. In saying that though, our screen is doing a really good job. So watch this. Let's turn the screen back on here. Now we're gonna utilize the screen as our light source. And we're gonna take the Hagibus King 20. Let's change that now instead to a whole different effect. I gotta remember how. <laughs> Mode. Here we go. So let's say that we want to do something a bit more intense. So with the Hagibus King 20, it's a much more powerful light than that Wii light, but what we can do is we can take it, cast it at 100%, point it at that back wall, 
Okay, and now we'll have to do a little bit of customization here a little bit. So what we'll do for starters is we'll go ahead and brighten up the picture that we have here utilizing the screen as our key light, okay? Now the situation is it's not up high enough to really give us that key light effect. So if we want to, uh, maybe we could use it as the fill instead of the key light. Let's try this. Let's bring up the intensity on our fill light here make it the key light. So for starters, let's turn off the screen and let's make sure that we got the Rembrandt triangle effect going on. Looks pretty good. Maybe we'll go a little bit brighter, a bit more intense. Okay, and we'll adjust that in camera here in a second. Maybe we'll take it to, maybe we'll take it to 100%. Let's go about here for now. So it's obviously very intense. That's okay. We're gonna go ahead and turn the TV back on. We're gonna see the fill come in on this side of the face. Now we're going to darken our stuff until we get the major fill all taken care of there. Now we got this nice little cast light. Uh, and of course we can simply change that by calming down our key light. So if we feel like that's just not, if it's too strong and we kind of want this to allow more light on the face, we'll simply darken this and then apply just a little bit more light in camera. Which once again, the more light that we provide in camera, immediately the effect is going to be that we might have more grain in the footage. Okay, It depends, but look at what we've just created here. That light is much brighter. It's casting a much better tone on that back wall. We've created a whole different effect. Maybe if we don't like that color, we simply change the color, which uh, purple on red shirt probably isn't quite the good fit. Let's go for something. Maybe we want to go political. So we can cast blue on the back instead, and, uh, and or, or you guys might even think that's more of a purple. But you can see what effect we've created here in very little time at all. And technically this is only using one light, using a computer monitor as the, as the key, as the fill light. And then we're using what would be our key light to light up the back of the room to create these crazy effects. Uh, I, this is something that has truly caught me off guard as I've been learning this uh, over the years and the more that I see the simplicity of just using three lights to accomplish this goal, and technically only two right now uh, because we're not even using the small Wii light at this moment in time to get any other effect. Well technically we have the yellow still bouncing up on the bottom of the shirts there. But if if you are in trouble, say maybe you don't have a stand for this light, we can turn off the screen and even cast a different color light on the opposite side to create an effect. Maybe if you can get it up on a table, get it up high enough, or maybe you have a spare stand, uh, get get like three of these stands or four of these stands. You'll never you'll you'll never have too many of these stands. They're amazing, uh, and they're simple. They're like twenty bucks a piece, and you can do whatever you want. I'm using that yellow right now to create that little effect there, and you can of course change these lights from RGB mode right back into uh, any effect you want, and see what's going to our. Um, Let's go into our that's 7,000 Kelvin right there that can create that effect. I mean, there's just so many variables that we can do to make this more interesting and keep that cinematic look that just makes it extra special. Or use your surroundings, use the scenario that you have to create the cast lights that you need. Uh, working in a corner of a room is beneficial because if the walls are white in the corner of a room, you can bounce your key light off of the wall and bounce it onto the side of your face creating the same effect that we're getting here just because you're bouncing it off of a white wall. It's as simple as that and we're doing this all with our cell phone and three lights and uh, technically a computer monitor if we really want to be nitpicky about it. How cool is that? I mean, how simple is that in comparison to what you saw in the beginning of this video? Thank you so much for watching. I gotta go. I have a ton of stuff to do here. It's almost time to go live again uh, on my morning show. Uh, I'm a radio DJ by day. I have an awesome job where they allow me my flexibility. As long as I'm getting stuff done, I can pretty much do what I please. And uh, in the same breath, I love making content for you guys. All being done on my cell phone with three lights, and I would have had my awesome microphone, which would have made this audio so much better if it wasn't for the fact that I forgot a cable at home. All right, I'll see you guys next time right here on Legacy Studio. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and you know what? On Instagram, please uh, send me, it's official underscore Legacy Studio on Instagram. Take a picture of your setup 
and let me see what you have. Just tag your tag me in there um, at official underscore legacy studio. I want to see what you're doing with your lighting now that you know some of these very simple effects to create something as cool as this. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank <music> you.